You never know what's going to happen when you're in Las Vegas as the PBR World Finals take place. And we were over at South Point yesterday, and uh, a good friend of ours and a huge supporter of a lot of the great military organizations that we have, Mike Lee, was walking around. And uh, we were able to catch up with Mike Lee and his entire family, Dana and his three kiddos right there. Noah's competing at the MBR. And, uh, it was an interesting dynamic to see what Mike Lee had to say about competing in a PBR and the support of a fantastic family along with hearing what his kids have to say about how it is with Mike Lee being a dad and being one of the best bull riders on the PBR built Ford Tough Series Tour. So let's kick it over and see what Mike Lee and family have to say about his run at the 2017 PBR World Finals and him as a top PBR bull rider. Well, the 2017 PBR World Finals is alive and kicking, and we're uh, hanging out at the South Point with uh, one of the greatest bull riders and one of the only two guys right now that have 500 career rides in the Bill Fort Tough, Mike Lee. It's, uh, it's been a great career thus far for you, has it not? It's been pretty good, yeah. This year's been a little slow, but yeah. <laughs> hey, you still made it top 35, and you have the support of a very loving family. Yep. You know, let's talk about the family and then we'll get back to you because these two right here and your wife, if you ever follow her social media, she is Snapchatting on planes and doing everything. Hey, I'm going to support the greatest man ever, which is fantastic. But let's talk about another great man that's following Daddy's protege, your, your young son Noah. He's part of the MBR and uh, this kid can, can get it done, Noah. You are now an MBR, MBR World Finals contestant. How special is that? You can hold that mic up to your mouth there. Uh, you having fun this year? Yes, sir. How many bulls have you covered so far? Mostly... Three? Three, I think. Yep, three. We got one more today? Yes, sir. What, what bull did you draw today? Blackjack. Blackjack. He's pretty good, or no? Uh, he... So, so. <laughs> <laughs> some bowls you can win off of and some yeah. bowls you can't, right? He, he'll, you can win around off of him though, but he doesn't really do much. <laughs> he just sits there and lets you lets you ride him, huh? Alright, Lorelai, you may not be riding bulls, but I tell you what, you're riding something that's just about as tough. You're a very talented barrel racer in your own right. Yes, sir. Yeah. She's getting better. Uh, she she uses uh, two hands on the rain now, right? Yeah. That's good. She's not so worried about falling off, right? Yes. Sir. Awesome. Getting a little faster. How is it? How is life like with Mike Lee as your dad? Is it fun? Yeah, but it's you know sometimes. You don't want friends just for your dad. You just you want friends because they want to be your friends. That is that is spoken true, and there's a lot of family members. And Dana, you can attest to that. There's a lot of people that that want to be a part of a family crowd and, and within the family, and because yes. of who he is, and not because of who you guys are as individuals away from the arena. That brings the mama bear out. <laughs> Makes me want to protect my babies and. Not my big baby, but my big oh, man. She almost called you a big baby, mm -hmm. right on camera. Yeah. Did you get it? <laughs> but Mike, Mike said no. I'm gonna give her the look. She's like, you're not my big baby. Not no. the big baby. The big boy. <laughs> you know. You just want to protect them. Yeah, absolutely. And what is it like being a family member with young kids, watching Mike ride day in and day out in the arena, always wondering what's gonna happen. Um. A few years ago, I would have said it was really hard. Then I kind of, you get used to it and you have your plan. So you have your plan of attack. If something goes wrong, this is what I do. And that just makes my anxiety go away. 
It's harder knowing I can't jump over the fence with three babies. I can hold one baby and I can jump over the fence and be in the <laughs> arena with him and be all right. But if I have three of them, it makes it a little harder. But knowing the bullfighters and trusting them that they know their job. If he gets hung up, he knows his job. I've watched him get hung up before and Absolutely. Know he knows. Yeah, and you know, he knows and, what to do. And, and and Mike, attesting to that, you have some fantastic sponsors that, when things are achy and when things hurt, you have the fine folks from Real Time, mm -hmm. and you have the fine folks from Total Feeds and the Dr. Harry Anderson. They keep you mentally and physically strong, not only for the World Finals of six up to six rounds of competitions in five days. You were at the Velocity Tour. I mean, that's a lot of bull riding within two weeks. Yeah, a lot of times you go home kind of sore, but um, play again now, you know, it, it keeps my joints moving and keeps them from cracking. Real time, you know, it, it's I use it every day just to maintain, uh, try to get that soreness out, you know, and, and my total people plus, it gives me energy to go all day, so. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's fantastic, and let's talk about your workout routine, because you have been big on social media and Noah's a bull rider, he's following in your footsteps. Are you having people punch him in the gut yet? Like they do you, or <laughs> is that coming? Uh, he, he, can take a, <laughs> he can take a hit to the stomach. He's uh, might be not as hard as uh, a hit as me, but you know, he, he's getting there. He's building his abs up. Uh, he can do some, several pull-ups, so that's important. You gotta be strong, have a strong shoulder, so yeah, you don't have to have surgery right away and stuff like that. So. Now Noah, MBR, World Finals contestant, what is one thing that you can tell your fellow up-and-coming bull riders that you would suggest them to do to get to the level where you're at today? What's one thing you would tell them? What'd you do? What'd you do when you started bucking off? What'd we go do? Practice. We went to the practice pen until we figured it out, huh? Just kept getting on until we rode one, and then we called it good. Yeah. Awesome. All right. And Mike, how about yourself? Yeah, it, it really depends on what's wrong, but uh, if, if I have to, I go get on some bulls, and uh, originally it just, it's in my head, so uh, I already know how to ride bulls, and so I've learned a long time ago, so now it's just a head game, so uh, you just got to keep it simple, back to basics. And Dana, last question, and then we got to go because I know that you guys got some things, but having a family here in Las Vegas and Mike Lee, how do you keep not only everybody in the family straight each and every day with all the ways that he's getting poked and prod and pulled and keep him on track as well. How do you guys do that? Not a lot of yelling. <laughs> <laughs> we just, I mean, we've been on the road for a long time, kind of get used to it. We know the pattern and just knowing what needs to be done. This week, he comes first. It's his finals. We make sure he eats, he gets sleep, me and the baby will leave the room if he gets upset and just going with it. Yeah, that's it. Drinking that's water, eating healthy, taking, making sure we have all his supplements with us in the morning so we don't have to go back to the room well, midday. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's talk about supplements, all right? Because where you're at in the hotel, they don't have your coffee. No. And uh, you had to rectify that situation. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I started taking Revital Brew. I love it. I lost weight on it. I've stayed awake all week. I'm not sick in Vegas, which is surprising to For me. For the first time For ever. For the first time yeah. ever. Because I really believe because of the coffee. It's kind of like an instant coffee. We didn't have a coffee maker, so I turned the water as hot as possible. Put it in a cup, mix it together, put a little creamer in it, and I'm good. Life of a 2004 PBR World Champion, they don't even have a coffee maker. Yes. <laughs> I always tell them I find it very funny. When we stay in low-end hotels, they have a microwave and a mini fridge. When you come to the big fancy hotels, there's no microwave, <laughs> there's no refrigerator. It makes it just a little bit harder when you have little ones that are hungry Once. all the Cheerios time. Cheerios in the morning. Yes. Oh, hey. Good stuff. Now, Mike, I'll tell you what, it has been awesome. Are we going to be able to see a victory lap around that huge arena? Are you going to go around the whole thing? Yeah. Or are you just going to cut that in half? I, I'm pretty sure I'm not going to do that whole thing. I'll probably just go to one corner or the other and go out. But uh, yeah, it's looking good tonight. Got a good bull. Uh, he does buck pretty good, but he's uh, he fits me. so. Absolutely does. And uh, great, great 
uh, you know, endorsee of the Warriors and Rodeo program, and it's very near and dear to my heart as a veteran as well. And I know that you love our men and women and our service and uh, appreciate everything that they do in our uniform. Yes, sir. I mean, um, Warriors and Rodeo um, is part of the program that we're in. And, and uh, yeah, I get to sit down with some of them guys and talk to them and uh, try to work through all the, pretty much the head game. That's what I have to deal with riding bulls, and so, uh, yep, just make sure they know the truth and uh, don't believe that lies and the enemy that trying to bring you down, you know. Absolutely, and uh, good Lord will, and uh, we'll have a great rest of the final run in the Sounds next good. four nights. Mike Lee, thank you so much. What a uh, fantastic opportunity to sit down with you and the entire family, Dana, Noah, Norlai. Great luck, and uh, thank you guys for spending time to spend it with us here at the Rodeo Round. Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Jason Hetland here, 2017 PBR World Finals, the 2004 PBR World Champion Mike Lee and his entire family. <laughs> Last night, round four was uh, something that touched a lot of people's hearts here, not only within the PBR community and the fan base, but Western lifestyle events and sports as a whole, and after everything that happened a month ago for the city of Las Vegas in general. Uh, last night, every year and actually every event in 2017, in some way, shape, or form, we have paid tribute to one of America's greatest, who's, uh, we honor one of the, the American heroes, and uh, it all culminated to the final event here last night where we uh, really showed the true patriotism of what the fans are here. Uh, man, <laughs> everything from Ryan Weaver up on stage and, and hearing his story of uh, heartache and tragedy of his brother and brother-in-law to hearing the music that's put out of his mouth in honor of our military, our law enforcement, EMS, firefighters, seeing all of those victims and, and uh, remembrances. Uh, we had seven families up there last night that were honored as part of our last uh, Celebrate America tour. And to cap it all off, um, one of the greatest honors I've ever had of being in the Western lifestyle industry and covering PBRs and rodeos was uh, being able to sit down with retired NYPD detective Rich Miller. Uh, you may not know his name, but after you watch his story in our interview that we're going to go to in a little bit, you're going to know exactly who this guy is. Um, he was at the World Trade Center. He was one of the first responding officers, and he was there September 12th, 2001. And at approximately 2.01 p.m., this guy went into the frozen zone, and he was the first person to raise an American flag in that zone. And uh, to hear his story and to be able to sit down with him off camera and um, talk to him and get to know him and his beautiful wife and, and hear the story and see the heartache and sadness and, uh, as well as the, uh, the honor that, that you saw through his eyes and his expressions was truly a moment that I will never, ever forget in my entire life of doing Western sports media or media in that aspect. So... Uh, at this time, I would really like to uh, round out this section of last night's Celebrate America by bringing you inside my conversation with the one and only Detective Rich Miller, the NYPD. 2017 PBR World Finals, and uh, it's Celebrate America Saturday. And right now, the honor that I have and the chills that I have going up and down my body are absolutely amazing. Retired NYPD. Detective Rich Miller, um, what happened on September 11th, 2001? Lee left everybody across this great nation in just turmoil. And uh, what you guys had to endure that day and the weeks and years past then is something that, that most of us can't even imagine. Well, oh, boy. Uh, Fans, he needs to hear from you right it's a now. great loss. I mean, to our city, uh, to our department, to uh, the FDNY, 
and my FEMA team. I, I lost members of my FEMA team as well uh, on September 11th. And uh, when we uh, were working through the night, recovering John McLaughlin, the last known survivor to come out from Port Authority Police Department, we were aware that there may be some survivors below ground. So with, uh, with that, my team was sent out to go below ground. And uh, when we came out later in the, in, in the, uh, in the, in the morning, and we're given a break. We just noticed the, just the devastation all around us as it got, became daylight. We came out at the daylight, and uh, we just decided we needed a flag up for our guys. Uh, um, I, let's talk about that because uh, what is something that I mean? You were in the spur of the moment. What you did that day on September 12th, right about 2:01 p.m. Correct was something that any person that lives in this country would do. But you did it to honor those. And you were the one that rose that first flag in the frozen zone after the terrorist attack on 9-11. Well, when uh, we were given a break to come out, uh, we were down in the sub-basements of the third and fourth floor sub-basements where Port Authority, uh, their headquarters was. We made our way up and we saw the sphere uh, between the buildings that, as a kid growing up, I saw, we saw the sphere. And a firefighter said, that's one of the, and that's an antenna off the North Tower. So I turned to my partner, Richie Hardy, and said, we're getting a flag up for Mike and our guys. Mike Curtin was a very good friend of mine, was uh, with, worked in ESU with me. And Mike, uh, our team was sent out to Oklahoma, the Arthur Murrow building. And when Mike recovered the Marine's body uh, uh, in the uh, captain, of the Marine Recruiting Center there, when he said, we're not going to bring this Marine out like this, he wrapped in an American flag, and they brought him out. Uh, I knew how important the flag was to Mike, and I knew how important the flag was to many of our missing guys. I needed the flag up for them. Yeah, I just, I, I'm at a loss. The, the opening that the PBR and, and Mr. Weaver did to bring you out to walk across the dirt of the arena floor and post that flag one more time among survivors of terrorist attacks across the country. Just, I mean, what an extreme honor it was. It was a great honor to me uh, and, and to be asked to be out here. Uh, when, I, uh, when I knew I wanted to put a flag up, it was for my missing and I wanted to lift the hearts and, and minds of all the men and women that were working around Ground Zero at that moment. And, and uh, I just know that we're going to we're defiant. We're going to beat this. This is something we, that we're going to do. And to this day, we're still fighting and we're still going to beat them. Everything happening on and uh, that is the mindset of every true American in the greatest country in the world, the United States. When you were raising that flag, it got quiet around the rubble and you heard one voice talk to us about that yeah. well, when I went up the ladder uh, I, I before I went up the ladder I, it, I just wanted to flag up and uh, the two firefighters I brought a la ladder over I went to hand the, the ladder of the th flag off to one of the firefighters I just wanted to flag up my partner Richie Hargan said get up there I said oh yeah so I went up the ladder reached out and put it out there and I and I heard the present arms and then I realized it really was quiet and that was the only sound you could hear and then I I almost dropped the flag and, uh, I was just I was just in awe like wow the people this, we've got a flag up got right back to work I'll tell you what as you were in awe September 12th 2001 we were in awe tonight and thank you so much for helping us celebrate America and part of the Western lifestyle industry, the sport of professional rodeo, and the entire professional bull riding team. Thank you, and thank you for your service. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, Jason Hetland here, 2017 PBR World Finals for the Rodeo Roundup as we celebrate America on Saturday with retired detective Rich Miller. Thank you.
Well, round number four was in the books last night, and uh, I'll tell you what, we thought we were going to have more history. Jess Lockwood falls off, so he goes three for three, falls off on round four, and uh, one of these virtual young guns that has only been in the United States for just over a week took full advantage of that tonight with Jose Vitor LeMay. He goes four for four. He is a, <laughs> a virtual rookie in the PBR over in Brazil, but uh, this is his first ever World Finals. He hasn't been in the States for more than a week, and he's going four for four, and he is going one bull better in the championship Sunday than all of his combined idols on both sides of the fence, both Silvano, Galeramy, and on the American side. He, he look, really looks up to Jess Lockwood, Derek Klobaba, J.B. Mooney, all those guys, and he's sitting in that locker room looking to the left and looking to the right of him, and he's sitting a full ball ahead. Now, that being said, the world title race is going to get a little interesting. Yes, Jess Lockwood has made up a lot of, time, lot of points, but uh, with Jess Lockwood falling off, Derek falling off, and uh, the other guys kind of out of reach, not out of reach, but within making any huge changes in the leaderboard, we're still looking at going in the championship round. Only 322 and a half points difference between one and two. Best friends, Jess Lockwood, number one, Derek Kobaba, number two. So it's still anything can happen because Jose can take the round, the event win. And uh, just lock good from falter again, and no, it doesn't. We don't know where everybody's going to end up. So uh, literally, it's going to come down to the last bowl of championship round here later on this afternoon, and uh, it's going to be a huge, huge day where we're going to crown not only the PBR World Champion for 2017, but we're going to crown the Rookie of the Year as well as the Buck and Bull of the Year, and it's going to be between probably Bruiser and Pearl Harbor, and uh, Bruiser put about a point and a quarter, if my mind serves me correctly, in round number two, better score when they came into the World Finals virtual on a plane with .04 points in between them. So it's going to be a huge, huge afternoon here later on today as Championship Sunday is set to begin right here from T-Mobile in the beautiful Las Vegas. Round number four, 2017 PBR World Finals is in the books, and uh, a guy that, well, you're fairly new to the United States. You've only been here, say, what, six days? Is that right? He said, yes, the guy who came here in 2017, the world mundo, the final of the world, the guy who came here, you said, what, six days? Yes. <laughs> well, I think you're making the most of it because you've come in here, and as of four nights with one night to go, Championship Sunday left, you are the only man to go four for four, and you are a full bull, full bull ahead of every one of your idols in that locker room here this week. Ele falou assim que você está aqui hoje, você é o único que parou nos quatro tours e está com tour a mais que os teus ídolos que você estava falando no locker room agora. Como você se sente disso? Sinto realizado é, por todo esse trabalho que eu venho fazendo. É, é até meio que, acho que não caiu a ficha ainda para mim, sabe, do, do que está acontecendo aqui, do que eu estou fazendo. É, eu acho que só Deus para explicar tudo isso mesmo. É, é, é realmente, é realmente maravilhoso. Eu não realmente não sabia ainda onde eu estou e o que eu estou fazendo e o que eu sou capaz de fazer aqui, e eu estou tentando deixar isso ir, e continuar como é, e até amanhã, mais um outro bolo, e talvez mais um outro bolo, e talvez ser um campeão de final, isso vai ser uma história de história. I think you're well on your way to being a World Finals champion already. And although you've been consistent all week, this is the first hardware you've been able to take home. What does this first round win belt buckle mean to you from a World Finals competition? Ele falou que de todos os torres que você parou até agora, essa hoje foi o único dia que você conseguiu pegar uma fivela, um pedaço, né, um metal, uma fivela, uma lembrança. Então, como isso significa para você essa fivela do round da PBR na final mundial? Essa fivela é muito importante para mim porque foi a primeira que eu que eu ganhei aqui. Era um sonho ter uma quadradinha dessa aqui na cinta. <risos> é, e eu estou muito feliz. Esse aqui vai ficar na minha lembrança para sempre é, de recordação desse momento fantástico. Que It's really amazing because I always dream to have a little square buckle like this because I always watch on TV and and it's gonna be my memories 
forever for life and and it's going to be amazing but i'm looking forward to get a couple more tomorrow now last question because i know everybody wants to get a hold of you you had big bucks that's a bull that jess lockwood won around on here earlier in the week what do you know about that bull and how confident are you going into tomorrow if it looks like pick out big bucks amanhã que eu tô com o jess lockwood ganhou um round nele qual que é a sua confiança em, em montar ele amanhã e o que que a gente pode esperar disso é um excelente touro, é, já vi ele pulando com Jazz, já vi ele pulando com amigos meus, com Luciano, Castro. Então eu já estudei ele bastante antes mesmo de ter escolhido ele. É, é um touro que deu um round aqui, ele proporcionou uma nota de 90. E eu vou procurar tentar ganhar outro round, tentar é, me manter na liderança é, do evento e tentar ser um campeão aqui dentro dessa arena de Las Vegas. I've been studying him for a while. I saw Jess riding him, and he he gave him a you know 90 plus. And I watched Luciano de Costa ride him too. And that's the reason I picked him because I want to win around and I want to win the average. And I'm just going to try to do my job, keep doing what I've been doing so far, one by one. And I hope to win another round tomorrow and go for the championship and go with with the win and the big win. Absolutely, Jose Vitor Leme. Round number four winner. Hold that buckle out so everybody can see it, my friend. Congratulations on your first round win here at 2017 PBR World Finals. Thank you, sir. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Jason Hitler, 2017 PBR World Finals. Roll your round up live with your round four winner, Jose Victor LeMay. Well, you heard from Jose Vitor LeMay on his first round win of a World Finals. And uh, when I asked him how that first buckle felt, as you could see, he got a big smile on his face. And Paulo Krimber, I think he can feel it too. And you know, he was up there on stage last night with Silvano Alves and Jess Lockwood and uh, talking about everything. And, and that's what this sport is about. Anybody can come in here and have a great, great event and make a name for themselves. And, and much like Dinar Barbosa, his Brazilian counterpart, Dinar tried all year long to do what he had to do and get his family into the States because he was here on a temporary work visa. Well, guess what? Jose is too, and he spoke last night about this, what this round win is going to do and the confidence it does to bring his girlfriend over to the States very soon. And uh, you can tell that he just got really upbeat when he spoke about his loved ones having the opportunity to come live their lives in the United States of America once he uh, gets on the Built Ford Tough Series Tour in 2018. And we will see him in New York as the Rodeo Roundup will be there. And we'll see if he can continue his dominance in their first event of the 2018 season in Madison Square Gardens in New York in just about two months time. We hope you're enjoying your live webcast brought to you by Midwest Rodeos. If you would like your event to be live webcasted, please contact us today by sending an email to midwestrodeos at gmail.com. Championship Sunday is upon us and the world title race is up for grabs as you can see from our graphic right here. It is a virtual dead heat. There is a little bit of distance that has been put on by Just Lockwood with three big go-round wins early on in the event. But coming into champion someday, this, later this afternoon, any one of these guys can take home the world championship title with only 322 and a half points between number one and number two. Derek Kobaba has faltered a little bit. Just Lockwood fell off tonight or last night, so anything is possible on Championship Sunday. We're only hours away from crowning a 2017 PBR World Champion, and we'll be back with you later this afternoon for an exclusive interview with your newly crowned PBR World Champion. Just like every round before, round four give everybody an opportunity to win one of those beautiful hand-painted feathers from our sponsors from Diamond D Art out of Dayton, Iowa, and a fourth round winner is going to be right up here with your three round winners prior to that. So each of these four folks right here is going to take home a beautiful hand-painted feathers from our good friends from Diamond D Art. Now, it is an earlier performance this afternoon, so make sure right after you see this, you get on fans of the PBR behind the shoots, and you get on there, and you, or you go to our website, and you click the link, and you make your fantasy picks for Championship Sunday for your chance to win the last of the five feathers, courtesy of our good friends from Diamond D Art out of Dayton, Iowa. Thank <laughs> you.